Welcome to the webinar, everybody. Key to a more advanced off-grid system, the relay driver and its applications. My name is Mark McHenry, and I'm a marketing manager with Morningstar, and I'll be moderating the webcast. The webinar will run for about an hour, including answers to questions from the audience. So if you have any questions, please go ahead and type them into the chat section on your GoToWebinar pane. Also, I should mention that we're going to be recording this broadcast and emailing you a link to the recording tomorrow. And the slides used during this webinar have been attached to the handout section, so you can download them now or anytime during this webinar. A data sheet and operation manual PDF have also been included in the handout section, and that's on your GoToWebinar pane. So with that, I'd like to introduce our guest presenter, Rob Rallo of Solar System Services. Rob, I believe you now have control of the slides, so please go ahead and tell the audience a little bit about yourself and your company, and then go right into today's presentation. Thank you, Mark. Uh, just to let you know, I am a President, CEO, and Chief Engineer of uh, Solar System Services. I've got over 30 years of experience in the off-grid um, systems business. Uh, focusing mostly on standalone, hybrid, and uh, UPS systems. I'm an active member of uh, the IEEE Standards Association, so I've helped to uh, write uh, some of the standards regarding the solar industry, especially in the off-grid um, area. So my company provides strictly engineering services. Uh, we don't provide any materials whatsoever, uh, just off-grid engineering services or anything from system sizing. And again, that could be standalone or hybrid, or UPS. Um, various engineering services, design services, uh, drawings, materialists. Um, I can help with material sourcing. I can do documentation like manuals, uh, help with technical writing, specifications, troubleshooting. I've been getting a lot of that lately from people and training, sort of as I'm doing now today for you all. Um, and if you're sending my services, at the end, uh, we'll have uh, my contact information. You'd like to contact me uh, regarding any assistance you might need with your project requirements. Okay, so today's presentation is going to be the relay driver. Um, we're going to start with what is it, then we're going to go into uh, what does it work with, and then uh, we're going to talk about what you can do with it, and then we're going to go through some examples, and of course, um, as Mark already mentioned, we'll do some questions and answers at the end. Um, before I get into that, I think the first question most people might have is going to be, what does it cost, which isn't up there, and uh, I believe the retail price on it is around $150. And uh, um, I would say contact your dealer, distributor, or Morningstar uh, for your exact price on that. But I believe the retail is around 150. Okay. So what is the relay driver? Okay, the relay driver is an accessory that you can use in off-grid systems um, that will help you do voltage control, temperature control, lighting control, generator control, and you can uh, and it can do controls based upon inputs. Um, from sensors or alarms. We're going to go into each one of those in detail as we go through the, exa uh, through the examples and applications. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the features. It has an operating range of 8 to 68 volts DC. So it has a huge range. So it'll work for 12, 24, and 48 volt systems. And I guess a 36 volt, but I don't really do those too often. So again, most of your nominal voltages that we'll work with. It has a great temperature range of minus 40 degrees Celsius to plus 45 degrees Celsius. Very low self-consumption, less than 20 milliamps, which means it's not much of a uh, parasitic load at all in your system. As a matter of fact, most of your system, it would, you could probably even factor in that uh, small self-consumption and the actual system losses uh, for the system and not have to really account for it. It also has an internal temp sensor that can be used for your temperature controls. We'll go into that in a little more detail. It's got uh, LED indicators to let you know what it's doing. And most importantly, it's got four channels that allows you to control up to four separate devices. Okay, it can be DIN mounted or wall mounted. Um, and this is the other thing, it can work independently. So it can work as a standalone product, which can be very useful in a lot of applications. I'm gonna go into that in detail. Or it can be used with certain morning store products. Um, mostly, uh, I, I, you can, it'll work with a, a, the TriStar, with the TriStar PWM or MPPT. It'll also work with um, ProStars and other devices, anything that allow you to connect to it via the uh, um, 
RG11 connector or the RST32. Uh, that also includes a new EMC1, so you can actually remotely uh, contact and control the relay driver. There could be some uses for that one if you wanted to try to program it remotely or be able to control things remotely, um, such as a load on and off for load control or even a generator on and off to test it, things like that. So that could come in handy as well as another feature you might want to use. Okay, going into what you can do with it again, we, you can uh, control a generator, which is extremely useful. We'll go into generator control in quite a bit of detail because you can do simple generator control and complicated control. So to work with uh, just a simple on off two wire or more complicated three wires, and I'll go through examples, several examples of those when we get into that. Or you can do multi event lighting control. Um, so in addition to simple dust to dawn, you can also do uh, various uh, controls as well as well there. You can also do multiple ones. So you could do uh, several different lights at several different times if you want to. Um, one, of my, one of the features I think is pretty cool is you can use as a secondary charge controller. And we'll go into that in detail. So you don't need to use a whole bunch of uh, pro stars or tri stars. You could use, uh, we'll say one tri star and one of these to control multiple relays. And we'll go into that in detail as well as an example. Um, you can do alerts um, like an alarms, uh, such as a voltage, high voltage, low voltage. Uh, you can do remote inverter on off. That can be really useful. I will go into that in detail as well. And uh, one of the other things that up here that we can also talk about is a low voltage disconnect, which also works well with the TriStars since the TriStars can only do one function at a time, which would be um, you don't have to use both one for charge control, one for load control. You can replace the load controller with the relay driver. And that'll be one of the examples we'll talk about as well. The other neat thing is, is that the um, Relay driver also takes external inputs. So you can use it to um, generate alarms or control things based upon those inputs. Now, it does use one of the channels for those, but we will go into that in detail, and there, there could be some handy uses for that also. So again, we'll cover all of these things in more detail as we go through the presentation. So as again, as I mentioned, the applications, we got voltage control, and there are many different voltage control applications we can, we can talk about. Uh, load diversion control. Um, which, which again can be done based upon voltage. And it, it's another charge mechanism you can use. So instead of using a tri-store for a load diversion, you could use a relay driver. Um, lighting control, alerts and alarms, generator control, and of course, control based upon inputs. Um, I also wanna mention just briefly, these are just, I'm just gonna go through a few examples and applications. I'm certain there are many more than you can think of. Um, I don't want to, again, we don't have enough time to cover every possible thing. But uh, this is just to try to give you an idea of the things you can do with it, maybe get you thinking about other ways that you can use a relay driver. And if you've got any questions on that, um, again, there will be time at the end to go through questions, or you're welcome to contact me and uh, regarding uh, your specific projects and applications you might need help with. Okay, so we're gonna start with the voltage control. I think one of the reasons for this is I think it's probably the most common application for the relay driver. Um, and for the voltage control, you can use it to do alarms, Low voltage disconnect, um, the neat thing there is you can do multiple loads and you can do prioritization. So if you've got a, a system where you've got uh, something that's absolutely critical, you might drop off, I don't know, you might actually drop off your, your heating or cooling equipment first before you drop off your telecommunications equipment or something like that. So you can do prioritization. Uh, additional rate control that I mentioned before, we'll talk about that again a little bit more. And load diversion control, which is again, uh, just another control mechanism you can use uh, for charging. Most of these will require external relay. Uh, the relay driver is a solid state device. So for a lot of these, an external relay will be required as the channels can only handle um, up to 750 milliamps, that's it. So if your load is less than 750 milliamps, then yes, you can drive a trick with the relay driver. But I think in most applications, a uh, secondary relay will be needed for that. Um, I think, I'm thinking, when I think of a small load, I'm thinking like maybe some LED indicators or buzzers or something like that, an audible alarm that you can drive directly. Um, as I mentioned, in most cases, you will need external relay. Something to think about is there is a little bit of leakage current, not much at all. Most devices should not be sensitive to that, but just to make you aware, if you've got like a really low power LED, um, that could possibly be an issue. Um, I've seen that before on some solid state devices. So it's a possibility. You might just want to test that and check that out first before you uh, start implementing um, your project. Again, keeping with the uh, the voltage control here, we're going to talk about alerts and alarms. Uh, I you can use it in conjunction with Morningstar charge controllers or as a standalone product. There's a, 
there's good reasons for both. Um, I in a standalone, which I think is great, is if the controller for some reason locks up or has an issue, then this operates separately. So you can monitor the battery voltage separately. Then you can trigger alarms based upon that. So you don't rely on the charge controller itself. Um, so I think there are advantages to that. Uh, it is a completely standalone device so that it, it works independently to, to uh, generate alarms if there's a problem. Now, it can also work with the Morningstar, which could also be helpful as well. So if you're finding out the heat sink is, has a high temperature or something like that, you can generate alarms based upon uh, things coming from the charge controller. So there might be times when you want to work with the charge controller to, to generate alarms from it, and there might be times you might want to work independently um, such that you have a, a, a separate device that is not that uh, can generate an alarm and that isn't dependent on the charge controller itself. So again, there are a couple of different reasons why you might want to go with either of those, just depends on what you're trying to do with it. And um, also uh, the external input, you can generate alarms based upon that. Uh, a great one might be an intrusion alarm. Um, so if somebody's opened up the enclosure or a gate or something like that, you can generate an alarm based upon that. Another neat one might be a low fuel alarm if you're using generators, and we'll get into some of those in more detail when we get to the uh, inputs. Okay, I want to go through uh, just a lot of what I'm going to do is go through examples and show you the screens. These are the Relay Driver setup screens. Uh, the Relay Driver um, can only be programmed via the MSView software, which is free and you can download from the Morningstar website. So this will require you to plug in with your computer to the Relay Driver to program it. Um, and again, you have to do that via the MSView software. Okay, so when you start doing that, when you start with the setup and the uh, with the MSView, you're going to get this default screen. Okay, and then you want to at this point decide which channel you would want to use uh, for your alarm or your alert. Uh, then I'm going to do the simple example first. So you can start with simple. Okay, so then the next screen you're going to get is going to ask you for a thresh uh, what you want to do with it. Um, and I'm going to say threshold because we're going to do a voltage control based upon that. So then we click next. And then it's going to ask whether you, whether you want to use a uh, standalone or from another device. I'm going to go with the standalone because I want this to just be a high voltage or low voltage alarm. I don't want it to operate separately from anything else. I want it to be a, an independent uh, alarm source. So we're going to click next. And we're going to select, we're going to do this as a low voltage alarm. So we're going to select input voltage. Okay, and this is the voltage that is being read from the power input terminals of the relay driver. Um, they're not super accurate, but they are accurate enough for this. I mean, they're pretty good. I've, I've been doing this for many years, and uh, the accuracy is just fine for doing alarms and most control functions, as a matter of fact. So I have no problem using it directly. Okay, so once you select input voltage, and you're going to select your, your on and your off voltages, click finish. And for the HVA, it would be exactly the same thing. It would just be the opposite. Uh, you just flip it around for your on and off voltages. So it will just work backwards. But you can do exactly the same thing. Procedure is the same. Then click Finished, and um, it's programmed. Now you can do the same thing with temperature. Okay, and again, as I mentioned before, the relay driver has a internal temperature sensor in it. So you can go ahead and do the same thing. And uh, again, you would just do the on and off based upon temperatures and click finish. So these are two different ways that we can do that. And again, what we've done is, is we've done this with just channel one. Um, and we turn, we decide to turn it on or off based upon a voltage or temperature. You can do this with multiple ones. So you could have one, like channel one could be high voltage, channel two could be low voltage, and channel three could be temperature. So again, you've got four channels. You've got four options. Uh, you could use one. Some, none, all, however we're going to do it. So uh, there are various options there. And again, this is just for alarms themselves. That was for the simple. You can get a little bit more advanced. Some of the advanced options are you can do delays. Uh, so basically, in those examples I showed earlier, once you cross that voltage or that temperature, it immediately turns on. When it goes in the direction, it immediately turns off. If you want to delay in there, then you can use the advanced features. Um, and you can go ahead and have a delay for on, a delay for off, and you can program those as you see fit. Okay, just a few notes on uh, some of the advanced options. Um, the high threshold is the upper value which the event should occur. Uh, there's also a low to high delay. Okay, and that's the time that you wait between the high threshold, uh, the changing of state. Um, there's a max high tip, high, there's a max high time, a minimum high time, and some other things there. So um, I would say you might want to read the manual when it comes to some of these advanced options if you decide to go in there and uh, play with some of these variables. I don't want to go with them 
into them too much time right now as we have a short amount of time to cover all this information, but just want to make you aware of the advanced options. So again, this device can allow you to do even more things than I'm trying to show you now. Um, I'm just trying to kind of give you an overview of some of the things you can do with it, and you're welcome to uh, go into it in more detail later. Um, I'll also say most of what I'm covering, most of the material information, you can get right out of the um, both the Relay Driver Manual, and there's also a applications manual as well. So there's two different manuals for this device um, that go into detail on what you can do with it. And again, some more on the low thresholds, again, the high to low delays, max low time, minimum low time. And when you do that, sometimes you get stuff like this. Uh, you'll notice here's the high threshold mark, the low threshold, here's your low to high delays, your high to low delays, and things like that. So as you're going through it, when you do the advanced options, uh, you kind of end up with a graph like this. Um, and you can see as it goes up, um, where it'll come on, and then where it'll go off, and things like that. So that's kind of the curve that you'll get when you go in these advanced options. If you choose to use it, you don't have to. You can go with the simple. I frequently use a simple, none of a problem with it. Sometimes I don't think you need to go for the advanced stuff. But if you feel a need to put like a 15 second delay so you don't get nuisance trips or something like that, sometimes these are a good idea to go ahead and do that. Um, okay. Now, if you wanted to do alarms based upon the charge controller, we're gonna run through a quick example of that. So we're gonna go back to your default screen again, decide which channel to use. And again, I'm gonna go with the simple just to keep everything kind of simple. Then you're gonna select alarm or fault and click next. Then you're, going to, then you're going to select the appropriate, there's a pull down for the appropriate device or controller. In this case, I'm going to work with the TriStar. Okay, I'm going to click Next. And you can see there's a whole lot of stuff you can trigger alarms based upon. Uh, this is a good one, actually. If the RTS is shorted or missing, that's a great one. You want to do an alarm based upon that. I mentioned heat sink temperature earlier. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff you could uh, uh, do alarms based upon. This is just... Um, this is just to kind of give you an idea. So select whichever ones you want. You could do uh, just a few or all, however you want to do it. Then you would click finish when you're done. Okay, okay. now let's talk about that low voltage disconnect. Um, again, I keep sticking with the TriStar because I seem to use the Relay Driver a lot with the TriStar. Uh, since the TriStar only does the charge control, uh, you need to use a second one for a load control. But this is another option or alternative to that. Um, you can go ahead and use an external relay. You can control your load with the relay driver instead. Um, you can do this. It, the setup is exactly the same as the LVA. There is no difference. Um, the channel is still turning on on the low voltage and turning off when you want it to. So it's just instead of turning on and off an alarm, you're turning on and off the same exact relay that the load would be running through. Okay. And again, you can use the simple or advanced, and you can use the standalone or, again, work with the charge controller voltage. So you have many options there as well. And this is just another way you could do a, an LVD without actually having to use uh, another device. The other nice thing, that another good reason to use this might be you might want to use a high power relay. Um, let's say you might, um, let's, let's say this, let's say you might have a, uh, a pump or some type of valve that might pull a whole lot of current, like it might pull 50 or 60 amps for a short amount of time for maybe a minute or two, and it might happen once a day. So you may have a small system. Let's say you might be using a Sun Saver. It's such a small system. Uh, you might be able to use a Sun Saver 10 or Sun Saver 20. That Sun Saver certainly isn't going to be able to power that valve or motor load, for, you know, even for a short amount of time because it, it can't handle anything over, say, 10 or 20 amps, and you've got a, a load that might be uh, 50 or 60 amps. Um, so this would be another option for you to still have a low voltage disconnect. In the past, a lot of people would just power that load directly with a with a uh, circuit breaker. This allows you to still have a low voltage disconnect option. All you need to do is put a power relay in line with that circuit breaker and power that relay off of the uh, relay driver. And there you go, now you still have a low voltage disconnect. So there are many different ways that you can use this to do your control. Well, on the same lines, additional rate regulation. This is one of my favorites. A lot of people don't do this, but I think this is a great option. Uh, again, you can control a power relay, and just as you were per, you could program it uh, based upon simple standalone, and it, just like I mentioned before, like you could do an LVA, an LVD, the same way you do the low voltage alarm. You could do one array regulation the same way you would do a low, a high alarm. So it's the same thing. You can have it turn off the relay um, at a certain voltage and turn it back on when it drops down. Uh, this is only be for bulk charging, not finished charging. But if you worked with a relay, um, with a TriStar or TriStar MPPT or another another one of those devices, that can do the finished charging. So you can get your nice 
absorption time and everything else with your TriStar charge controller and get your bulk charging in so you can do more additional bulk charging with, say, this type of device. Um, so we'll just allow you to do that. Now, you, again, you could do it as a standalone with simple, or one of the other neat features is you can actually do that based upon the PWM duty cycle of the TriStar or the TriStar MPPT. So if you were, say, uh, let's say you could do multiples too. I've done this before in a system. I had a single TriStar and I had three separate relays. I had four ray inputs actually, and I staggered my uh, relays such that they would disconnect at various PWM cycles. So it might have been, you know, one might disconnect at 80%, another one at 60, another one at 40. Then we do that final charge again with the TriStar um, doing that nice uh, absorption time with it. So another neat option that might be a uh, 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 another method for doing that without using four uh, TriStars, you might be able to do it with just one and one relay driver and a few extra external relays. Along those same lines, you can do the same exact thing. Actually, slides look almost identical. They look very similar because they are. Um, you could do the same exact thing with a load diversion controller in the same exact manner. Uh, it could be used for um, a wind or micro hydro system uh, where you can't actually, um, when it comes to regulation, you can't actually shut the device off because if you opened it up, um, you would actually uh, you would actually free spin it and burn up the device. Now you could always do. You can also do this with the TriStar products. Again, one of the one of the reasons it's called TriStars. It can be used for a charge controller, load controller, or diversion controller. Uh, but you could also do some of these functions with the relay drivers. I'm pointing out. Uh, and again, you can do it the same way. You just have a uh, power relay, and you can do the simple based upon the standalone voltage. Or again, you could do it based upon the uh, PWM cycle of the TriStar. So it could be used either way. Just another example of how you can use it. And again, I was pointing out, you don't have to have a whole wall of TriStars as you're seeing here. Uh, for every five TriStars, you could, or every, you know, you could replace it with one TriStar and one uh, relay driver. Just another idea, another option. It might save you some money. Um, I look at this, all I see is a lot of heat needing to be dissipated from all those heat sinks. Um, when you're using uh, the method I mentioned earlier, using a simple relay, there's minimal losses and pretty much almost no heat generated because of that. So you wouldn't need to have as much ventilation or something like that um, when using that. So just another option. You also wouldn't need as much space either. Power relays take up a lot less space as well. So you might be able to save some space, save some uh, ventilation requirements, something like that by going down the other method. Okay, let's talk about the temperature control features. And again, this is gonna be real similar to everything else we talked about. Um, it's the same as the high temperature alarm. Again, you can do a simple or advanced. You can do standalone, or you can do it based upon the battery temperature being monitored by the charge controller. And again, one of the things you might do, want to do is you could use a, a relay to uh, to uh, turn a, a fan on and off, uh, or louvers, open and close louvers. Um, again, getting back to uh, this slide with all of this, with all those tri stars, uh, you might need to get that heat out of there somehow. So you might want to turn fans on and off based upon temperature or open and close louvers to go with those fans. So you could do that. You could use, say, one channel for the louver, another one for the fan control. So another option for that. Or you could use this perhaps for uh, for heating. Um, generally, I try to avoid heating when it comes to uh, systems. It just ends up uh, off-grid systems. that just ends up being a, a waste of energy. Um, I'd rather try to find a way to avoid that if possible. Okay, lighting control, another great option. Uh, again, you can use it. In this case, you really do want to use it with the TriStar or the TriStar MPPT because you're going to need to use, read the um, array voltage off of those. So this is one of the few times you cannot use the relay driver standalone device. It has to work with either the TriStar or the TriStar MPPT or similar device. You could also, obviously, I mentioned earlier, the ProStar and some of the other ones that have the uh, communications capability. Uh, but again, it has to read that array voltage, so it must work with the Morningstar charge controller for that. Um, a great reason you might want to use these are lights that have high start uh, startup surges from ballast. I've seen that a lot where those ballasts, when they're starting up, might accidentally overload um, some of the, tr some of the uh, smaller devices, again, like the ProStar or a Sunsaver or something like that. So uh, again, you could have a separate power relay that would uh, avoid the startup, that would um, take care of the startup surge so you don't have to worry about the uh, the Morningstar product shine down on, on uh, load overload. I've seen that a lot on the Sun Savers. Not so much on the uh, bigger devices, but on the smaller ones, I've seen that a lot. 
Um, oh, by the way, the Salt should also work with the Sunsaver Duo. Forgot to mention that because it does have communications. It should work there. Um, another one is multi-light control. I mentioned that one earlier. Or this is another great one, AC lighting. Uh, I briefly mentioned the inverter earlier. Um, a lot of inverters now, and I'll go in, well, actually, I'll get that more detail in just a minute, but AC lighting control, great, great use of this, okay? Um, and again, you have to use it with one of the money stroke charge controllers because you have to monitor the array voltage that way, okay? Okay, I was just about to get this one. So AC lighting control, again, uh, this, the sure sign is a, a great one to use with this, but you can use it with any inverter that has a remote on off. Now you'll notice the the, um, there is right here, it says remote on off. You got two screws right there. When these are when these are shorted, the inverter is on. When it's open, it is off. So when a lot of inverters have this feature, the neat thing is that when these inverters are on, they can sit there and consume up to five, uh, five watts or more. I've seen some of these consume up to eight watts or more sitting there idle. Um, that's a lot of extra power consumption that is not needed. Um, so if the inverter only needs to be on at night to power up the lights, so if you've got AC lights and the inverter only needs to be on to do that, uh, then you're wasting you know, five watts or more just sitting here waiting for night to roll around. Whereas when this is actually off, you're consuming less than a watt. Um, and the standby or the, uh, the or 0.3 in the standby or the uh, excuse, 0.6 in the standby, or the 0.3 in the off actual off mode. Many inverters have this type of feature, feature and I think this is a great use for it. Now I'm talking about it again, in regards to the lighting control, but this could be for any other type of applications you might have where you only need to load on certain times a day or if you want to be able to control that load remotely. So a great way to do that um, is with the relay driver. Um, and again, so uh, we're going to go through a lighting example, but you can replace the actual relay. So instead of controlling a relay, you can control the uh, on-off of the inverter as an option to turn it on and off. So great use of that. Neat idea. Um, another way to use it too is, um, again, getting back to this on off, and uh, you can also use it for low voltage disconnect. Um, I know the sure sign and a lot of inverters already have an LVD in it, but um, a lot of them have an LVD that is too low. Um, the sure sign being designed for off grid is not the case, but a lot of the other ones are designed more for UPS applications, and they may disconnect your battery at too low a level. Well, using the um, using the relay driver. Uh, you could do a low voltage disconnect to these remote on off terminals, and that would allow you to disconnect the inverter at a higher voltage, um, thereby preventing your battery from being over discharged. So again, another great use for the LA driver. And uh, we talked about it here because I think this is a great use of uh, this on off feature of the inverter, uh, as well as working with the relay driver to do uh, some AC lighting control. So let's go through an example of lighting control. Okay, uh, this is one that comes right out of the uh, the Morningstar Applications Handbook. Um, so right, the way this works is you've got the channel one uh, is is uh, lighting control. You've got uh, you've got some high uh, high power lights. They're going to be channel two, and you got some low power lights. are going to be channel three. The idea here being is you can stagger stuff. Um, if the high power lights are, cons you might want those early in the evening. Maybe the low power ones on all, all night long, so you can use less energy. Uh, maybe if you're coming into a, a low voltage situation, you might want to disconnect these first or you're getting that staggered uh, LVD or prioritization I mentioned earlier. So just a, an example how you can do that. And again, uh, fourth channel in this case isn't being used. So uh, what you can do is, so to go through this example, and this is a great way you can see how you can use all, you know, more than one channel, you can use multiple at a time. So channel one is going to be based upon the array control. So we're going to do that. We're going to turn the array voltage on um, when it drops below 8 volts. We're going to turn it off when it goes to, when it goes above 10 volts. So again, we're, we're just going to do a we're going to threshold. We're going to base it based upon the tristar uh, voltage, a PV voltage, and we're just going to use that high uh, high, which is going to be the off at 10 volts and the low, which is going to be the on at 8 volts. Then we're going to send up the LVDs to do that prioritization. Uh, the LVD, so we're going to disconnect that high powered one earlier and then the low power one later, and that's just going to be simple control. Um, that's just based upon the battery voltage. Okay, now in this case, we are doing it based upon the tri star voltage. You could do it as a standalone voltage as well, you don't have to use a tri star voltage for all of these. You can mix and match, so uh, you could use the standalone for these and just use the relay driver voltage if you wanted to. You have many options when it comes to this, and again, we're doing the simple, but uh, you also could do a more advanced where you can do the uh, history. The, uh, 
the delay with uh, with the timing and stuff like that. Okay, so that's the lighting control. Let's get into generator control, uh, which I think is another great use of the relay driver. Uh, you could use something simple, like a two-wire on-off. Um, it looks just super simple. Basically, uh, when um, when it, a uh, when you have a dry contact that is closed, the generator starts. It starts to run. When you open the dry contact, the generator stops. Super simple. A lot of generators work this way now. Okay, in that case, you could uh, program it exactly the same as you want an LVA or LVD. You could use a simple or advanced. And again, you can use a standalone device or you can do it based upon the uh, charge controller voltage. So again, options there. And again, that's just real simple. That's just a two wire on off. <clears throat> so nothing too complicated there. Same stuff we've already gone over before with the LVA and the LVD. But um, let's say you have a more, uh, you want to do something more advanced or you have a multi wire generator start. I personally encountered this one a few months ago. Um, the really driver really came in handy. I'm not certain what I would have done otherwise. I probably had to use a, a PLC for that. And that was something a little more complicated that I wanted to use for my application. So um, as I mentioned, so again, let's get to some of the more advanced stuff. I want to point out no solar array is required. This does not need to even have a solar array. You could do this um, as a standalone device as you wanted to. No solar array is needed. No TriStar is required. Again, this can function as a standalone device just by itself. Okay, um, and we're going to go through an example here of a multi-wire control. Um, it's not uncommon for a generator to have a preheat or prime. They're going to have a certain amount of cranking time and you have a run time. So it might have three different channels here. Um, you can have uh, some of the additional generator control functions are a minimum on time, maximum on time, minimum off time, maximum off time. And the neat thing with the maximum off time is that's a great use of an exercise cycle. So let's say you want your generator to extra, you know, if a generator isn't running for a while, you can have your your starting battery go dead or the fluids get kind of thick or something like that. It's usually good to start a generator up every one to two weeks or so and run it. So you could actually set up uh, this max off time as an exercise cycle and make certain that your generator starts up uh, once a week or so and runs just to get all the fluids flowing and stuff like that. Okay, so just mentions we're going to go through we're going to go through an example of this one. Uh, and again, you don't have to use all the channels, but you can use multiple ones. In this case, channel one is being used for the run, channel two for the crank, channel three for the preheat, and channel four not used. And you can see over here how it uh, um, uh, how the uh, how the actual channels are, are controlling um, the uh, separate uh, separate functions. In this case, the generator output goes through, uh, goes the AC output goes through a battery charger, the charger batteries. And again, you can see there's no, I want to point out again, there is no solar array needed. There is no other uh, charger needed, like a trist or anything like that. This can actually work just by itself, just in this manner. Um, actually, there's a, this isn't used a lot, but it was used in the old days. This is actually called, um, this is actually called a, a cycle charge system where you would literally uh, just charge the batteries from a generator. You would do this like every 12 to 24 hours and then uh, shut the generator off and you can actually um, run the generator more efficiently, consume less fuel and extend the uh, life of the generator doing this. Um, it's also as a CDC or a charge discharge charge. Um, so it's a whole another type of system that can be done strictly with the relay driver. And again, just to go through how this would work, um, you've got your default screen, you would, uh, channel one would be programmed for simple. Select gen start, select next, and uh, select, in this case, we're going to do standalone, as I mentioned before. Click next. Okay, now, even though we uh, we selected uh, just channel one to start with, this will use all three channels. Okay, so what you're actually going to do is you're actually going to, when you tell it which wire, this is which channel. So in this case, the run is on wire one, the crank is on wire two, and the uh, preheat is on wire three or channel three. Okay, so these wires are actually the channels. Okay, and you can see here, it gives you a little graph of how it works. Uh, again, so we're gonna do the preheat. So you can see, so it's like, we're gonna start that up first. We're gonna heat up, make sure the fluids are, this is very important in places that are cold. You wanna make certain all your fluids are, are moving. Otherwise you can damage the uh, the generator. Um, if the oil is not flowing loose, if it's, if, it's, if it's thick from being cold, it could possibly damage it. So that's why you have a preheater that you are warm up to get all the fluids uh, uh, liquefied again, uh, thinned out, and then you would do your crank. This is your crank, and this would be your run. So you can get a, a, a it gives you, a, um, the nice thing about the uh, relay driver is 
Um, and your programming it actually gives you a picture of what's going on, so you get a good idea to make sure you have it right. Okay, let's go next. Uh, but again, now you can do different timing functions. Okay, so again, we're gonna we're gonna do the pre crank We're gonna heat for 30 seconds. You may even need more. I don't know. Depending upon your application, you might need to heat this for for five minutes. I have no idea. So uh, it just depends on your application. So right now we're gonna do the the pre crank, which would be 30 seconds. Then the uh, we're gonna wait five seconds, and then we're gonna crank because you want a little bit of time in between. Okay. You could choose that no time. You could choose that more time. You might you want to crank for more than five seconds. That's up to you. Some of this stuff might be trial and error, depending upon your generator and how it works. Um, I've had that experience as well before. Okay, um, and then we're going to do the start and stop. Again, we're going to kind of go simple, so we know just based upon voltage. So when your uh, voltage drops to four, this is for a 48 volt system. When your voltage drops to 44 volts, we're going to start the generator, and uh, we're going to give it a delay of five minutes, which means you have to be um, below at or below that for five minutes. And on the off, when the battery voltage climbs back up to 56 volts, we're going to shut it off. But again, we're going to wait five minutes to make certain we're, we're going to stay over that, just to make certain we really have um, done the maximum. I want to point out uh, the maximum time is 18 hours on this one. Just a little note to have down there on that. And actually, I'll, I might, I'll mention some more of these generator um, things as well when it comes to maximum minimums in terms of the control. We'll get to that. I have a little slide on that in a minute. And then you would click finished, and there you go. It would be all programmed. So again, uh, if you click the advanced instead of simple, you kind of get kind of some of the same stuff, but you get a few extra things, like your maximum on time, uh, minimum on time, all times, things like that. Uh, and again, this gets in your exercise cycles. Um, generally, when you start a generator, you want to run it for a minimum of 15 minutes or so, um, and things like that. So just um, actually, I like to use the advanced functions I generally do when it comes to generator control because I like these additional uh, timing things over here especially using a standalone device, really handy to have. <clears throat> just want to highlight a few things. Uh, the maximum on time is 18 hours. So you need to make certain that your generator has recharged your battery in 18 hours. If you're using a, uh, a uh, charging device that's slower than that, um, that, may that wants to try to charge the generator in 24, uh, charge the battery in 24 hours, that's not going to work because the maximum on time is 18. So you're going to have to make certain that that battery is recharged and 18 hours or less, because that is the max on time uh, that the uh, relay driver will allow. Max off time is 42 days, so uh, I wouldn't recommend that anyway. As I mentioned, you really want to run your generator every seven to 14 days. Uh, even once a month would be 30 days, so 42 days. That being your maximum off time is not a big deal. Uh, but this 18 hours for the maximum on time could be a problem. I've been in some situations where you you might it might take up to 24 hours to recharge your battery if you're a uh, if your rectifier or battery charger is small versus the size of your generator, this might be in a, a case where you uh, might want to use a bigger battery charger or a bigger generator if needed to get your battery recharged a little faster. This is a neat example. This is one I, I personally encountered uh, a couple months ago. It took me a few hours to figure this one out, and I was really happy that I was using a uh, really driver to control this. Um, this was for an RV generator. And uh, the RV generator uh, was being adapted for an off-grid application. We were using it on a 24-volt system. And the RV generator was actually designed for a 12-volt uh, RV. So we had to really make some modifications to it. This wiring diagram over here is the wiring diagram that came directly out of the uh, generator manual. And uh, one of the things I didn't know but learned through trial and error was actually that, uh, that to start and stop this device, it was momentary. It wasn't a, it, you didn't you didn't close the relay constantly. It was a momentary. And the other thing was this generated to be primed, so that would be the pre-start. And uh, uh, it used the same momentary as the stop. So it got really kind of complicated. And again, I was really happy to have the uh, relay driver to be able to do this. So uh, I ended up not using channel three or four, although I'm thinking of going back and using these for inputs for a low fuel alarm. Actually, I'm thinking of using this for a low fuel alarm. Haven't done it yet, uh, but I'm uh, talking to that customer now to see if they want to do that, actually. Um, so this is what I ended up doing. So I ended up selecting the following functions and channels. So I ended up doing the pre-crank. Notice that, that I did not use the run, uh, okay, because I'm doing momentaries. So um, I ended up using the pre-crank, okay, which was my prime, and that was on the second wire, wire two. And my runner start is on, uh, is on one. Again, that's my crank. Now my stop is momentary. Again, now I said my I said my stop and my pre-crank were actually on the same line. So again, I was able to use channel two for that 
and she had a one for the uh, start. So my Tommy looks like this. Okay, so I selected that. And then again, I, uh, I left the maximum on the time of 18. Um, let's see. Uh, I went to a 14-day. My maximum off time was 14 days. Like I said, I like to throw on my uh, generator on exercise cycle every two weeks or so. So I ended up adjusting all of these. My, my priming, I decided to go with the 15-second. Uh, again, that was trial and error to figure out that was, whether that was long enough or not. So it took me about 15 seconds to prime the generator. Uh, I ended up cranking. Uh, I ended up waiting five seconds. I ended up cranking for 10 seconds. I found out five seconds wasn't enough. So the 10 seconds was good enough to make sure it stopped. And again, it's a momentary off, so the five seconds was more than enough for that. So again, it was nice to have all of these features of, of the relay driver because it worked perfectly for me. If I didn't have this device, I probably would have had to come to something way more complicated or switched out my generator completely, which the customer really didn't want to do as an option. So this worked out great. Okay, let's talk about some of the input functions. I mentioned that before. Uh, like I mentioned, a door opener or intrusion alarm. Uh, fuel level sensor, <clears throat> and perhaps even external temperature control. Um, if you want to be able to monitor something more directly, perhaps heat sinks on a TriStar or something like that, and you can monitor that. And then control louvers, fans, heaters, or something like that based upon those functions. Maybe you want to monitor the battery uh, battery temperature if the batteries get too hot or a load gets too hot or something like that. You can uh, open or close louvers and fans and something like that. So. Some of the various things you can control with the input. Actually, I really do like this uh, fuel level sensor. It'd be nice to know how much fuel you got left and what, uh, before uh, you actually, you know, so you know you have to get out there and refuel your your tanks. That's a nice one. Okay, most important thing about using this input function, make certain the channel is configured for disabled. Okay, we're gonna go through that in just a minute. Uh, and the input voltage must be less than or equal to the relay driver power voltage. So in other words, you have to be working within the same system voltage, okay? I don't think in most cases it's a problem, just a couple of notes to remember on that. Okay, so again, the default screen always has these channels as disabled anyway, so just make certain you leave it as that. Okay, uh, we're gonna go through example, we're gonna use channel two, we're gonna select that as a simple in this example. Then we're gonna do a threshold, click next. <clears throat> gonna use a standalone again for this, because we're gonna use the input. Now what's neat is, is we're gonna use the channel one for the uh, for an, for uh, on-off voltage. Okay, and that's where we're going to pick it up. So we're going to pick it up. Uh, we're going to pick up the input on channel one. Okay, so we're going to pick that up. And in this case, in this example, we're going to, uh, when that voltage is greater than nine volts, we're going to turn it on. And uh, again, we're turning on channel two based upon channel one. So when the channel one voltage is greater than nine volts, we're going to turn channel two on. And when that voltage drops to five volts, we're going to turn off. Now, you might be using a dry contact closure. That's fine. It's just the way this works is it works. Um, that is an option on the relay driver. It's looking for voltage. So you could basically run the uh, system voltage with a fuse or circuit breaker through an external relay or switch and pick it up here. So you could do it that way. That's actually how I would do it. Okay, then when you're done, click finish. And uh, there you go. Now, uh, if you want to do, this is a great way. This is kind of my wrapping it up. You can do multiple things at once with your relay driver. So this is just kind of putting it all together and doing multiple things. We're going to use channel one for the generator control, channel two for an HVA, channel three for an LVA, and channel four for a uh, TriStar fault. So um, we're going to stick with the simple. So again, we're going to have the uh, we're going to have a gen start based upon a tri star voltage. We're going to, we're going to do some simple control on that. Uh, so channel two is going to be um, uh, again because it's HVA. We're going to do battery voltage. Okay. And uh, oops, actually these are reversed. These should be the other way around. That should be the low voltage. That should be the high voltage. Those two things should be flipped. Sorry about that. Uh, and then of course number four is a tri star fault. Okay, I know that was quite a bit of information to cover. And again, I just want to say that that was just kind of a, a sampling of things you could do. Um, I'm hoping that uh, that you've learned something new that you can do with the relay driver. Hopefully you're going, geez, I know I could do that with it type of thing. And uh, I'm not trying to cover everything. I'm certain that somebody out there has got an application or the use of it that I have not thought of. And uh, that's great. But I just want to try to give you an idea of the many things you can do with it. Um, 
and uh, hopefully I got you thinking about it. Um, if you would like to, uh, again, my contact information is here. If you have, uh, if you need help on your project or your application, um, I'm happy to help you out with that. So, um, Mark, uh, do you have any questions from the audience? Okay, yeah, we do have a, a couple of questions that came in. Hopefully you can hear me. I'm taking yes, myself off mute. So, terrific. Um, let me start off with, uh, let's see, a question from Jeffrey. It says, um, are you saying that you can disconnect modules from a string at peak input to avoid current limits using the relay driver? Uh, yes, you can. But what I would do is that's an option, but I would actually wire that array, that array directly through a separate relay. So in other words, let's say you might have a 100 amp solar array and you might only be using a 60 amp um, uh, TriStar MPP, uh, PWM. Um, and because you don't want to exceed that 60 amp rating on a PWM, now on MPPT, it's a whole other thing because you can do that, but on a PWM, you might want to do that. So I might break my solar array up in half and do say 50 amps to an external power relay and control it with the relay driver and then send the other 50 amps to the TriStar. And again, I, I have an option of controlling that, uh, that external relay um, either via just a simple voltage control or based upon whether the TriStar is regulated or not. So that, that percent of duty cycle of PWM is when the TriStar is actually regulating. So depending upon where you are in the absorption cycle is where you might want to disconnect that. And again, you could do, so in other words, you could do half that solar array on bulk charge. Now, the other half can be used for absorption and, and float and everything else. Okay, terrific. Thanks for that question. Thanks for the answer. Another question here is, what alternative solutions are there to the relay driver, and why is the relay driver a better option? Well, there are two other ones, and one of the ones I've used frequently is just a very simple voltage control relay. Um, and actually, those can come in handy. Uh, those can be demounted, and uh, they actually have a, a relay built into them. Usually, they're about good for about five amps of, of current. So that is an option. Uh, and that's fine if you want to do one simple control. Uh, again, those those voltage control relays are very simple. They only do voltage control. Uh, they can do a, a high voltage or a low voltage arm, but that's all they can do. If you want to do multiple functions, it can't do that. Uh, if you want to do temperature or some other, something else, it can't. So if you just want to do a simple LVD or a simple gen on off or something like that or a simple arm, that's fine. But if you want to do multiple functions, you want to do a couple of LVDs, uh, maybe an HVA and an LVA or something like that, then that having multiple of those voltage control devices ends up being more expensive than just using the relay driver. Uh, the other problem with the voltage control relay is it can only do voltage control. It can't do any type of input control functions. It can't do uh, temperature control. It can't do any control based upon uh, the, the charge device. Uh, it also can't do remote control because again, you can remote control this via the EMC1. Um, the other device that I would think of you can use is a uh, PLC, a programmable logic controller, but those can get expensive and complicated. And uh, that, again, and those would also not work with the, um, the uh, TriStar or, or the charge controller. So it cannot, it, I mean, I guess you could try to use the Modbus to try to program it, but I've looked into this, it ends up being expensive and complicated way more than it needs to be. The really driver at the end of the day ends up being a simpler, more cost-effective device. So those would be the two options I would think of that you could use instead of a really driver. Um, and I guess if you wanted to do just simple, again, uh, if you want to do a simple LVD, you could use another uh, charge controller. As I mentioned with the array control, you can use multiple TriStars as you, people have done and seen in the past. Same thing for LVDs, you can use multiple ones for that. Uh, but uh, using a really driver sometimes can uh, take up less space and be a little more cost-effective of an option. Okay, great. Very good question. See another question here. Is it possible to set up the relay driver with an AC charger? Yes, um, I've actually seen that. I've seen people do that before. It's kind of a uh, uh, it's kind of a um, a grid backup type of thing. <laughs> They'd have a standalone system with a grid backup. Um, so instead of like uh, uh, instead of uh, turning say the generator on or off, you could do the same thing. You could put a, a, a power relay or external relay between that AC charger and the uh, battery and control it uh, via the relay driver, however you want to control it. If you want to control it based upon voltage or charge control or something like that, you could do that. Um, and there's no reason why you can't do it on the input side as well. Uh, it depends on the AC charger you're using, but you could perhaps switch that line input instead 
Um, I don't. It depends upon the application as to which and and the uh, and the charger being used whether it makes more sense to switch the output or to switch the input. But yeah, you could do that. Just put a relay in there. And actually, for actually depending upon the charger, I think about it. You might even have a remote on-off feature, kind of like the inverter. So you might even go simpler than that. You might just have an on-off that you can control via the relay driver and uh, keep it simple and um, do that as well. Okay, looks like a, this might be a follow-up question here. Can you program the relay driver to switch AC only for five or six hours in the evening, not just dawn to dusk? Yes, uh, there are timing functions that allow you to do that. So some of the, if you would click the advanced features, uh, you could go through the advanced, and that would allow you to do that with the uh, the timing functions. All right, I'm not certain. I, I will qualify that though. I'm not certain how accurate it is. Uh, I think those timers are fairly accurate though. I mean, I, I think if you're looking at a five-hour interval, I think if you're off by a a few seconds or even a minute, it's not going to matter that much. But uh, uh, and if also if you're looking at a, at a real time control, if you're looking for a real a time of day type of thing, that might not work for you unless you were going to use it in conjunction with a charge controller um, that can monitor the array voltage. Then you can do time of day control uh, as if you're doing a lighting control type of thing. So a couple of different options there. It just depends on what you want to do and what type of control you're looking for. Okay, very well put. I have a question here. Let's see. Is the Morningstar relay driver cooled via heat sink? Uh, no, it is. It is not cooled. It does not need to be cooled, really, because there's uh, the maximum current that can flow through those channels is less than an amp. So there's really not much heat build up at all. Um, so there's there's no issues with that at all. Uh, and again, it draws very little power. Um, it's less than 20 milliamps. So that's not an issue. Which is again another great reason to use it with a a, a relay. Uh, your your power consumption is very low, and therefore your heat dissipation very low, and you don't have these giant heat sinks building up heat in a small box that you then have to vent out. So, um, I just want to also qualify something I've, I've been saying a lot. There, I just want to point out there are various ways to do a lot of these things. The relay driver's got a lot of function to it, a lot. So, uh, there are probably three different ways to do some of these control functions, um, depending upon how you want to do it in your application. So. You know, again, there's multiple methods that you can use when it comes to these timing functions, whether you do a standalone or not, whether you do a conjunction with the charge control or not, whether you use timing functions or not, things like that, voltage control versus off the you know, off the relay driver versus off the charge controller. I mean, and, and there, isn't this, there isn't necessarily a right or wrong way to do it. It just depends upon what you prefer in your application. So, again, just want to point out there's multiple ways to program the relay driver to do whatever type of function you need it to do. Okay, very good. I see a question here. I mean, I just have to take this one. What is the warranty on the Morningstar relay driver? The warranty is five years. Uh, so I'll knock that one off. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Oh, okay. Uh, here's one for you, Rob. Let's see, does the relay driver have an internal battery? No, it does not. Uh, it does not at all. So it's only on when those power input terminals have uh, voltage on it. And uh, when that goes away, it's off. That's it. I would recommend uh, putting a one or two amp fuse or circuit breaker on the input. I think the manual calls for a two or five amp, but I've gotten away with as little as a one amp on it. Okay, very good. Looks like oh, I have a. Let me, let, me, let me also say though, but, but, but when you program it at store, the program doesn't go away. I'm sorry. When you I'm just sort of thinking about it. Somebody might be worried about when you turn it off, the program it goes away. No, once you program it, that program stays. Uh, until you reprogram it again. So you could uh, program it at the factory or the office. Actually, I recommend doing that and testing it. And then you could pack it up, ship it out to the field. And when you turn it on, however you program it, when it left the office, that's how it is in the field. Okay. So uh, once you program it, it stays that way until you reprogram it again. All right. Very good. I have a question here from Mark. Can the relay driver be used to program periodic equalizing of the battery? Uh, ooh. There, there might be a way to do that. Depends on how you wire a solar array, because you'd have to, uh, I guess theoretically, there's a way you could divert the solar array through a power relay to your batteries, and then you could you could uh, control that relay based upon time. So like maybe once a month or something like that, every 30 days or something like that, you could then uh, do that. You could set a threshold based upon voltage as well. 
So you could say, hey, um, you can either do, I want to, uh, once, uh, say, uh, once a month, I want to divert the solar array to the batteries, the full power for two hours or three hours or until you reach a certain voltage. So, um, yeah, theoretic theoretically, it should be possible uh, using um, at least one, if not more, relay. So depending upon what type of control you wanted to do, you know, in terms of timing functions for how long, what your threshold voltages are and stuff like that, you may have to use multiple relays or maybe one. Uh, but yes, you could theoretically do that. Okay, again, thanks for that question. Thanks for the answer. Here's a question from Sunday. Question is, would, would you use the relay driver to manage distribution of current as in vending of power from same solar bank to different sectors or loads? Ooh, let me think about that one a second. We can always take these offline. Too, yeah, I, uh, I mean, the relay driver can only control relays, and that's why it's named that way. So I'm not certain how you would distribute the current that way. I mean, you can do multiple load control, as you were mentioning earlier, showed examples of earlier. Um, you would, at the, I'm not certain it would depend on how you break it up. That might be kind of an application or project specific thing. Um, because it depends on how you break stuff up. It is not going to, it's not going to allow for sharing. You'd have to do some other method to do that because it's not going to share stuff. Um, you'd have to have some way of breaking it up. And if you could control the relays to break something up, that might be possible. Uh, I'm not certain. I'd have to look at that one in a little more detail. Okay, very good. I see a question here. Can you use Boolean logic with the relay driver? Oh, Yes, you can. I did not get that as an example, but yes, you could. You could use, uh, and I actually kind of mentioned that with the equalization a little bit. Um, depending upon what you want to do, uh, you you would need additional relays. But yes, you could do Boolean logic using multiple relays. Uh, you might have it, again, going back to the equalization example, uh, you might have a timing function. You might have a voltage function. So you could throw additional relays in there on different channels that might do things based upon uh, voltage control or based upon timing function. Um, so yes, you can do that using additional relays. Okay. I think there's actually might be an example of that somewhere. I don't remember if that was in the application manual or something like that. I didn't go into that one in detail just because I thought we might run out of time. So uh, again, there are many things you can do with it. I just tried to give people a small idea of the possibilities. Okay, very good. Let's see, question here. How many devices can you connect to the relay driver? Uh, you have four channels. You can do up to four uh, different things. Uh, that would either be uh, relays uh, for the output or an input function. So that's it. So only up to four. Up. Oh, oh! I did not forgot to mention. So point out, you can put multiple relay drivers in parallel. Uh, you can have multiple. Um, I've done examples of using two. You could probably do three or more, but I mean, two gave me eight channels to control, and you can control between relay drivers. So you can you can control um, something on relay driver two from relay driver one, and vice versa, and things like that. So yeah, it's a whole other level you can go to. Uh, again, I did not mention that. That's a very good question. I forgot about that, but yeah, I've done that before actually, where I've used, um, I've done it. I've had you know I needed to control five or six things, so I've added a second relay driver in, and you can control that second relay driver based upon the charge controller or the relay driver one or something like that, or input off of re something else, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, you could just you can keep on going with these things. I am, I don't know the limit on how many you can put together, to be honest. Uh, there probably is. Um, I've personally never done more than two, but I know three is possible. And for all I know, the max might be five or six or seven or eight. I'm not certain. I can't think of why you would need that many. But anyway, um, like I said, I've never done more than two in, uh, in, in real life applications. Okay, it looks like we're kind of at the end of our time. Let's just take one last question, and I, and I think this is the last question anyway, so I think we're good here. Uh, let's see. Is it okay to use the relay driver with a positively grounded system? Ah, um, you theoretically can use it. It is possible, but you have to be extremely careful with it. I mean, very careful, because unfortunately, the relay driver works as everything is referenced to that negative line. Um, in a negatively grounded system, that negative line is now grounded. But in a positively grounded system, that negative line now becomes your hot line and is floating. So it gets very tricky. 
Um, if you need to do it, it theoretically can be done, but I would try to, personally, I try to avoid it and try to find a way around it. Um, if it is your only option, yes, you can, but just be extremely careful um, with your reference voltages with regards to things and your circuit breakers and things like that, just to make certain you don't um, accidentally uh, short something out. So you have to be very careful with it. It, um, it can be done. It's just a little tricky, but it can be done. So uh, I'd like to uh, go ahead and say thank you, everybody, for your time uh, today. I hope, again, I hope you learned something. I hope you learned, uh, I hope you walked away saying, hey, I didn't know I could do that before. And um, uh, I'd also like to say uh, I would love, your, we would love your feedback with myself and Morningstar. And um, if you'd like to hear more about applications types of things, please let them know if you like, to, whenever you'd like to know for a webinar next. Um, I've kind of been bugging them about doing one on the, the uh, new functions of the, uh, the Generation 3 uh, ProStars, whether it's the MPPT or PWM, you got you can do all kinds of way cool things with those. We could do one on that, maybe the Sunsaver Duo, but if there's a Morningstar product out there you'd like to know more about, maybe go into more details on the features and functions, uh, give us some feedback, let us know, and maybe we'll try to do uh, something on that product. Great, sounds good. Well, thank you, Rob. A great presentation, and thanks for all of you who attended. Lots of good questions. Um, you can see the contact information up here on this thank you screen. And as a reminder, we will be emailing you a, a recording of this broadcast. So you'll get that by email tomorrow. So with that, I'm going to close things down. Thanks for joining everybody. And this concludes the broadcast.